Hello everyone and welcome to the pre-game session of Vampire the Masquerade, the Ultramere Chronicle I will be running on Roll20. Today we're going to be covering the starting resources that the players will be grabbing as well as some background information that they will actually acquire before going into the city. So, guys, I guess we should start discussing said resources and information. Yeah, I heard you, Nietzsche. I heard you, I know you're back. Okay, so, one of the things you might want to ask about is... Uh, the primogen of the various clans, or specifically the politics of various clans, in particular the Toreador and Ventru are very strong in this city. So, you might want to have more in-depth information about them and more general information about the rest. Well, that's strange. Apparently my mic was muted. Yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, I'm recording now and um, we should start discussing the starting resources you might want to acquire, including information. For example, you might want more in-depth information about the Toreador or the Ventru, who are probably the strongest clans in the city, and more general information about the rest, for one thing. Just so you have some ideas to how to approach the politics and uh, who the most powerful players are currently. Who let the Toreador actually take control? Well, it's just generally scheming. If you control the biggest Elysium in the city and everyone is talking to you and around you, you generally get to trade a lot of information and favors just by connecting people. So, uh, they don't have that much direct power per se, but they know everyone and everyone knows them. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so Dracolor wants to know about Nosferatu. Yeah, you could do that. You could find about Nosferatu, or maybe you should, you know, discuss as a group exactly what you want to spend your questions on. Because essentially all of you have five or six minutes of the Lord's time, and you can use that whichever way you want, getting information on pretty much anything. Of course, if he himself knows, he might not have all the information, especially since this abut rolled into the city recently, and before that there was the chaos that actually allowed the invasion, namely the local Tremere trying to usurp the prince's position. So, uh, the information might not be entirely current, even if he has that information. In addition to find out about the clans around us, um, I was actually hoping that the group would like to know about where the Chantry used to be, what's around there, what do we think is still there? Well, you would certainly know that the, where the Chantry is, it would be logically one of your first destinations, since you would want to know exactly what happened, but knowing the exact happenings is, you know, more or less part of your mission, since you just don't know. Essentially, what you do know is that first the prince, and then the sabbat rolled over the chantry, so uh, who knows what's left there. Okay. 
Okay, apparently Chucklor is gonna say something to us. Okay. FYI, a lot of this is improvised, so, um, you know, I don't have a step-by-step -step plan for everything. I just have a general idea which I will uh, develop as I go on a lot of things. Okay. Well, you just don't know. I did say that I made some Bali characters, but that could be now, that could be a month from now, that could be a year from now. It just means that they will probably crop up as some sort of a doomsday ritual. So, Bacon, Jack, other than Nosferatu, what else do y'all want to get some information on from uh, the uh, Lord? Well, if you want, Chuck, or I could just start answering these questions one by one as you think of them, and you can just keep a couple of them in reserve in case you think of something, after, you know, that you really need to know. So we could start with the obvious stuff like the Nosferatu and then uh, go from there. Okay, so you are asking about the Malkavians, about the Ventru, and about the Nosferatu, or rather the Ventru and the Prince, and the Nosferatu. Okay then, keep going. I will of course ask for your confirmation uh, before you know, actually spending a question on whatever it is that you're asking, just so we're, you know, sure that, uh, just so that we don't actually waste your starting resources, you know? Chris, is it also possible to speak to the uh, few neonates that are mentioned in the background who actually escaped the city? Hmm. Well, actually, that's a good question, but um, it could be argued that um, most of them are just making their way out of the city around the Sabbat that are heading in and around the Princess Hunters, and that they've just, you know, like, contacted the Lord by phone or some such. We could say that one of them is uh, there, but he's badly burned and just recovering just since it makes a great deal of sense that you would talk with them. Okay, that works. So yeah, he's essentially at uh, crippled, lying in a bed somewhere, just moaning in pain. Whatever you can get out of him, go for it. Okay, I'm going to switch over to uh, actual in-character. Um, this will be Liam speaking. All right, then. Mainly to the guy who actually made it out, the uh, cripple, see if I can get the information. Yeah, sure. He's, it's just his, uh, him and his ghoul there, so uh, the Lord just waves you away and gives you permission to talk to him. It's no big deal. Young one, I know you are in pain, and I know that this 
all seems so strange, but we're going back to the city, and we need your help. We need to know what you saw on your way out. We need to know what we're walking into. Are you crazy? Are you absolutely fracking crazy? The prince has the gangrel on his side. Do you see these claw marks? Do you see these claw marks? You do not want to go back in there. We have to, though. The Lord has ordered us in. Me and a group of other young ones. And... Oh my God, what did you do? It's a suicide mission. Just run. Run while you still can. Only we could, little one. But we can't. We were embraced. We are of the Tremere. And if the Lord says we must go, then we must go. So is there anything else you can tell me about what's going on in the city? I don't know. I got wounded in the initial assault and my ghoul managed to somehow get me out while... The prince was busy with the higher-ups, but I just remember him and his soldiers rushing into the Chantry. I don't recall anything beyond that, really. It was all a haze of pain. Somehow my ghoul got me onto a plane and out of the city. I just... I don't remember much beyond that. Um, I want to bow towards the goal um, to show that he has my respect for protecting his master as best he could. He is deeply confused by this as he has been treated as little better than a strange pet up to this point and most of the vampires don't even notice that he's there. Fear not. You saved one of us. You saved our kind, and you saved one of our gentry. You have my respect, and I do see you. You are not invisible to me. And if the day comes that where the embrace is yours, or even if not, I consider you a friend for what you have done for us. I'm just sorry I couldn't do more. Um, I think that's going to be all I'm going to be able to get out of the uh, young one there. So I'll return to the Lord and back with everybody else. I'll let them all know what I found out. Yeah, okay. Well, you do know that the prince apparently trusts the Gangrel enough to go into battle with them side by side, so that's something at least. There's apparently some sort of a relationship there. Yeah, quite possibly something that's going to need to be uh, severed, as it were. Well, you don't know yet. You might be able to actually uh, get into the prince's good graces and use him as the foundation of your power and uh, sort of unify with him against other clans that might want his power. It is an option. We'll leave that to the decision of the Chantry itself. And yes, Jack. I might be a little bit humane. Yeah, Bacon is asking if you are at war with the Prince and the Sabbat. Well, no, you're technically not. The Prince is letting you in and you technically have uh, the rights of a citizen in his city, right? You are under his protection and you are, you know, members of the organization. It's just that he doesn't like you much. He won't kill you out of hand, but he might be moving in the shadows to screw you over less directly.
It's like this, the Tremere tried to take over, right? But uh, that happened, they got knocked down and now it's the aftermath, right? Whatever war there was between the local Tremere and the Prince is... Well, it's done. The Tremere lost, they got screwed, so... Now you get to pick up the pieces. A refrigerator or just a cold box while you drive into town? Like, you can have one for like 50 bucks easily, it's no big deal, it's just that you have to keep track of where you put the blood. Oh, I, don't I think know. he's wanting something to keep his blood bags in. Yeah. I think so. Well, you first have to actually get a building and then make sure the electricity is on, right? But I don't know, refrigerator shouldn't cost too much, like a couple hundred bucks maybe. That's about it. The problem is, of course, that uh, you are going in in one, maybe two cars, right? Unless you really spend all of your money on just buying a bunch of crappy vans, right? So you can't really move all that much furniture. Hey Jack, uh, maybe we should find out where we're actually going to set up the chantry when we get into town before we decide about packing a refrigerator. Yeah, besides, the blood won't spoil for a couple of days, right? So, uh, it's more like you can buy a couple of extra bags to refuel between fights if you get into something really dangerous in the first night or two. Eventually, you'll want to set up a steady supply in town anyway, right? Jackalot took a interesting flaw and he's afraid that he's gonna get into a lot of trouble with it, so he's really interested in blood bags. Which is, of course, Jack. understandable. Jackalot, you know about my character. Don't be afraid just yet. Yeah, since you took that as a sleeping with enemy flow, I will play it every bit like that. If the local vampires find out, jaws will drop and things will get interesting. So does anyone else have any other questions to ask the Prince? Well, just one organizational thing which I want everyone to keep in mind. I'm not showing anything, uh, you know, spoilery on screen as is, but... Uh, well, I expect you to stay out of the videos I will be putting on YouTube simply because spoilers and, you know, I don't want you looking at any dots you shouldn't be looking at. I'm cool with that. I did uh, watch your intro introduction video and then give it a like so that maybe get some traffic to get us started. But I'll stay off the, the your page for here on out. <laughs> yeah, you know, it just uh, if you know things in advance, it kind of spoils surprise and well, you know. And as for what Jack Lore is saying about you getting blood haunted, John, that probably won't happen if you have some status, but you'll essentially be seen as a batshit crazy outsider at the very least, and people may well try to screw you from the shadows. I mean, you won't get uh, dogpiled by everyone unless you really ask for it, at least not in a way that you can't get out of. Don't they know that the shadows is where my character lives? 
It's kind of the point. You do know that there are a lot of Toreador and plenty of Malkavians in this town, right? As in people with auspics. I do, but uh, there's a ritual that I'm hoping to be able to uh, find some reference to very, very soon. Well, okay. I always need ideas for quest rewards, so uh, if there are things which you want to get, whether it's paths or rituals, I'll certainly consider putting it as some sort of reward. See if I can't find the uh, name of it so that you can look at the reference for it. Yeah, Stoning the Mask of Shadows. That would be the exact one, Jackalore. Doesn't it kind of replicate the uh, effects of Obfuscate? Yes, it kind of does. You have to have obfuscate level, I mean, Auspex level 3 to even be able to penetrate it. Which but... is about the same as you'd need to penetrate your obfuscate anyway, since you have it up to 3 already. I was kind of hoping that it might stack a little. Well, maybe because not. if you hide a shadow... If you hide a shadow, it makes the shadow harder to see, right? <laughs> Don't overdo it. Okay, I'll stay away from the uh, prying eyes of some of the elder Toreador and Malks. Well, not necessarily the Malks. They might be batshit crazy enough to actually like me. Just don't be stupid. I don't mind you being weird. I don't even mind you pissing people off. Go ahead, do it. Just uh, if you're gonna play these games with uh, all the political assholes, just be smart about it. It's not so much not doing anything wrong as um, doing it in a way that lets you get away with it. Okay. And yeah, Jack Lorick can be cast over multiple people, but. I also have the ability to do that anyway. Do you? I think that's level 5 power. Cloak the Gathering. Let me check. You may be right. Yeah, level 3 is um, hiding your face, you know, wearing a fake one, and uh, you need up to level 5 in order to cast your obfuscate on multiple people. Okay, then yeah, that makes uh, Dawn of Damascus Shadows a potentially valuable thing, then. Yeah, when uh, deciding on starting resources, keep in mind that um, there's a lot of political shit in this city going on, and um, image matters, so if you show up in uh, crappy clothes, in a barely running van, then uh, people will look down on you, and it will be harder to be taken seriously. So you might want to invest at least somewhat in being presentable. Yeah, that's perfectly fine, Jack Lore. You spend that much on clothing, you can definitely look uh, presentable and then some. Enough that people will, you know, not immediately notice you as that bum off the street. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> 
suit does sound good, Jack, but I don't want to go in looking like a bum. But I'm not exactly looking at spending so much on my clothing. Oh, uh, and I'm probably barefoot. Maybe leave the Elysium visit to someone else then. You know, just in case it reflects on the clan. I'm, I'm going to try to stay out of the uh, politics as much as possible, as my character has done for, as Liam has done for many, many years now. Well, you were a rich Italian crime lord, Bacon, but uh, the thing is, you're starting with one dot of resources, so I'm assuming that the vast majority of your wealth is simply put now in Giovanni's hands since they did come after you and ran you out of Italy, right? Besides, I thought you wanted to start with the fancy trophy axe, right? Well, you have to have something to remember the glory days of your family with, right? I mean, you don't have much left, but at least you have the axe, right? Absolutely, Big. You, you have to remember the past. See, you have an axe. I have what I have. We're all the same. We're all just trying to get by in this world. Oh yes, we're all trying to get by. You know, John, that I already have someone that I can throw at you regarding your past, right? I figured as much. They're going to have to travel a ways to get here, though, because I'm assuming we're not in that area. Well, it depends, doesn't it? It doesn't have to exactly be someone from your extended family who's coming after you. After all, there are a great many vampiric powers that can detect real magic. Yeah, that, that's not going to be pleasant. <laughs> Oh, there will be so much angst in this. I'm so looking forward to it. Actually, Jackalore, I was... I think I was looking at your character. Actually, no, it was Malik's or Nietzsche's. Uh, are you sure you want the idealist nature? Maybe Bon Vivant would fit your backstory better. I mean, you don't have to change, it's perfectly fine. I'm just wondering if it might work better for the kind of character you seem to be drawing up. I didn't really put a lot of thought to the, uh, the nature and the meaning of the character uh, the other day. Well, yeah, just because uh, we talked about how you had a big falling out uh, with your sire, right? Over your wild, wild ways, so uh, it would yeah. make a certain amount of sense, right? I think the loner aspect makes sense, but I don't know about the idealist part. Richter doesn't really... Yeah, I can't so I'm assuming you're Sarath, then? Uh, I just sort of threw it all together, so I didn't really pay attention. Uh, I did that all before I did my back story. I was going to change it, I just forgot.
Okay, so um, starting information, you guys have any concrete ideas as to what you want to definitely get? Just so you know, we can get this moving along. Okay, uh, I think we pretty much come to the decision that we want to know what we can about the political situation as far as the clans in the area, who has power as far as what the Lord knows as far as that goes. Also, personality of, say, the prince, maybe a few of the primogens who have exceptionally high amounts of power, especially maybe the Grand Grail now. See if the Lord may know what the uh, prince has that will got the Gangrel to a ally with him. That kind of information. If somebody wants to actually ask the Lord these questions, that'd be great. I probably shouldn't be the one to do it, nor would my character be the one to do it. Well, you can all just... Uh pull your questions and just ask them as a group, that's perfectly fine as well. It doesn't uh, necessarily have to be strictly three questions per each person, right? It's more like a guideline so that you know how much information you can get. Okay, mm let's take a look at uh, Serrat's inventory. Don't anyone speak up at once. So, right. Right, 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 right. Okay, I'm going to be speaking as Liam again. This time okay. to the Lord. Go ahead. My Lord. Um, yes, they told it? me that she, you would be willing to answer some questions about our mission as far as what we're walking into. Yes, just make it quick. I have a whole mess to deal with here and you're just one small part of it. Of course, my Lord. I will try not to take up too much of your time. We were first off just wondering, uh, do you know of any of the major shakers as far as the political players in the area, other than the prince himself? As in, I heard that he had an alliance with the Gangrel, and that there is a large Malkavian presence, and the Toreador were everywhere. Yes, well, the Toreador are, well, the Toreador primogen in particular, is probably the most influential kindred in the city after the prince. She runs the main Elysium of the city and everyone, and I do mean everyone, talks to her. You need to develop some sort of a relationship with her if you want to be taken seriously, otherwise you will be facing a very uphill battle. I suppose you could always try to do the same with the prince and use his backing to make gain some stats status, but um, he has a certain amount of hostility towards our clan. As for the Gangrel, well, they back the prince since he looks down on a lot of the foppery that the Ventru generally enjoy. He's, he used to be a soldier and an officer, and he has a no-bullshit attitude which alienates him somewhat from his own clan, but which the Gangrel apparently enjoy, and he affords them a great deal of freedom, so uh, they work well together. As for the Malkavians, well, they are spies along with the Nosferatu, and they have close ties with the Toreador, which in turn, of course, strengthens that Toreador bitch's power even further. A word of warning, Neonate. Do not trust her. She will, of course, try to present herself as a kind, caring figure. She does that to everyone from what I hear. Do not trust her. She's a snake. Of course, my lord. I will make sure that my fellow compatriots in this will understand that 
She isn't to be trusted. Used, possibly, but never trusted. Also, do you know of any of... Uh, as far as the strength and how large of a force the Sabbat rolled into the city with? Well, their advance has been somewhat blunted from what I hear, but from from the reports that we do have, I think it's most likely that it was the shovel heads and the neonates that were hardest hit. There are at least several ancillae in the city and I have heard vague rumors of Samisi fleshcrafted creations taking part in the battles. So, uh, be careful. There is at least something very powerful on their side in the city. More exact information than that we simply don't have, since it's hard to get accurate rev reports out of the city, what with our presence being limited to what few people still consider themselves as owing us favors or having a friendship with our clan. For most of them it has become unprofitable to associate themselves with us, so understandably, we only know so much. Absolutely, my lord. One of my compatriots also wanted to ask what you knew of the primogen of the Nosferatu. For whatever reason, he has an affinity towards the uh, ones of the not-so-beautiful of our kind. Well, beauty should, of course, matter very little. After all, the Nosferatu are a potent force and one which you should not ignore. But they... well, they used to be supporters of the prince, and they did much what the Malkavians have been doing for the Toreador in providing the prince with much-needed information and blackmail material. However, they were straight in the path of the advancing Sabbat, and apparently the rogue region decided to target them first, so as to blind the prince in his attempt to take over. So, it is hard to judge just how much of the Nosferatu information networks and their presence remains in the city. Also, uh, what do we know of uh, the Venturi themselves, outside of just the Prince? You mentioned that they may be alienated towards the Prince himself because of his certain views that he has that are typically against their ways. Well, he is... He has alienated a lot of the new blood who have grown up in backroom dealings and corporate boardrooms. He's more of an old-school type of venture with some silly notions of knightly honor and behavior befitting of a gentleman, shall we say. And the new blood thinks he's too honest, to put it bluntly. Then again, they fear him and they will not actively move against him, it's simply that the support of the Ventral Clan towards the Prince might be less fanatical than you might otherwise expect. Did you want to know about the uh Ventral Primogen as well? Yes, if uh, he appears to be a player of sorts, I would love to know about the Ventral Primogen. And the Ventral Primogen is another she, and uh, actually, yes, she is influential in the sense that she controls a lot of the mortal politics in the city and uh, has a firm grasp on the bureaucracy, which allows us her a certain amount of influence, even though she is perhaps not the oldest kindred in the city or the one with the greatest potency of the blood, she does offer useful services, for price of course, and thus people are often forced to trade with her, or if not forced, then find her the most convenient 
partner in various endeavors. Okay. Um, out of bacon now. I mean, out of character now. Dude. Uh, bacon, Jack, Nietzsche, do any of y'all have anything else you want to ask? You could always ask for... You can always ask for information about exactly what kind of behavior from you will be rewarded and punished. For example, what are the attitudes towards Diablory, or just what kind of uh, rebuilding effort should you prioritize, and things like that. Okay, so you want to ask about Diablory, right? Well, yeah. I expect it to be negative, but uh, I'd like to know more about uh, how observant they are and if they pay attention to things. If they're looking. Okay, so um, you approach the Lord with this. Exactly how do you phrase this? As in, how do you bring the subject up without uh, looking like a complete asshole? That's a good question. <laughs> I back away slowly. Uh, I think I'm not going to ask this. Well, you might need to know. I'll let somebody else ask it. I know somebody else will share this. Okay. After we get done with Nietzsche, after we get done with the prince, I'll explain why I definitely do not want to be anywhere near that subject. So it's up to y'all to ask that question. Or ask how to win favor with the Lord. Okay, so uh, Bacon, you want to ask about how the humans are in the city, right? And how they relate to the... Um, Ventral primogen. Is that right? Okay, then we'll just cover other people's questions and they can bring you up to speed later on. And, you know, we'll handle this when you're back. Uh, Sarath, I do believe you're going to be the only one who, thematically speaking, could actually ask anything of that sort to the prince, now that uh, Bacon had to step away. Okay, you can ask about that. Is that what you do? Okay, I should probably restart the video actually. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm going to stop recording here and we'll continue in the next...